John chapter 10, verses 22 to 42. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe, because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming? Because I said, I am the Son of God. If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Again, they sought to arrest him, and he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing at first, and there he remained. And many came to him, and they said, John did no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true. And many believed in him there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks so much to Garvin for reading for us tonight. We're in day 18 of our daily reflections and we're in John chapter 10. I wonder have you ever seen a, a baby who was born and was the spitting image of one of their parents. Perhaps just looked so much like them. It was, it's maybe hard to tell them apart when you see pictures of them. Most of you will know that at the beginning of the summer, I had a new little nephew come into the world, uh, little George, um, who is just a little dote. But he is the spitting image of my brother. Now, it's hard to tell them apart when you see photos of my brother Craig at the same age as, as George. It's hard to tell them apart. They're so similar. I'm just going to show you a quick photo to show you what I mean. It's amazing to see that kind of family genetics being carried on and, and children uh, look like their parents. Sometimes children behave like their parents, they have the same mannerisms uh, and they do the things the way their parents do them. And this passage in, in John 10, it sounds a bit like that's what's happening. It sounds like maybe um, Jesus is mimicking God, that he is, um, it looks like he's reflecting what God does. He looks a bit like him. He looks a bit like the Christ that they're expecting, the, the God that they're expecting, the saviour that they're expecting. He looks a bit like that, but they're not sure. And so they ask him, um, can you just tell us straight? Because there's whispers about this. You've alluded to it and we're just not sure. Who are you? Are you the Messiah? Are you the anointed one, the, the saviour? And Jesus says, you don't even see it. You can't even see it as you look at me. As you see the things that I have taught, the things that I've done, the miracles that I've performed, you can't even see it. 
and there were those who were spiritually blind and just couldn't grasp that at all and so Jesus perhaps vaguely reminded them of the Messiah that they were expecting because he did things a, a bit like uh, things that they had read about in the scriptures and so they're wondering is this is he like an imitation is he um someone who's just mimicking what um what our god does i think what we need to grasp as christians uh, in this passage but just in our in terms of our view and our vision of jesus this passage just highlights the fact that sometimes we get confused about the identity of Jesus. I've had this conversation lately uh, with someone in our church actually just how much confusion there is out there about the identity of Jesus. Who is he? Is he just a really good guy who did things that God told him to do? Actually he just um, lived a really nice life and, and has become for us a really great example of how to live our lives. He is a great example, but we must never be confused about the identity of Jesus. He is a human. He is a man who walked the earth. But we need to be sure that we know this. As we hear what Jesus responds to the people in this passage, what he says to them, what we actually should come to understand, this is not a man seeking to make himself God. It's not a man making himself God. This is the story of God who has made himself man. Philippians 2 really helps us with this. Philippians 2 from verse 5. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Being born in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus emptied himself. He he became the form of a man. He walked the earth. He was born in the lowliest of births. And so it, it's good for us at times to be able to reach out to the humanity of Jesus, to know that he was able to, to feel what we feel, to experience the pain uh, that we at times feel as humans. But actually, I want to challenge us today about our vision of Jesus. Are we going to be like the people in this story in John 10, where we're confused about Jesus and we think this is a man who's, who's doing something a bit like God, but we just can't see God in him? Or are we going to be people who will bow the knee, who will bow before Jesus, as, as Philippians says, that we would bow our knee before him and confess with our tongues that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is almighty God. I want to just challenge us today. What is your vision of Jesus? Have you just confined him, limited him to being a man who walked the earth? Or are we willing to just bring our, our vision of Jesus into line with what the scriptures tell us, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Are we going to be people who um, can confine Jesus to humanity? Or are we going to be people who bow the knee before him? People who confess with their tongues that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's really important that we get this right, that he was fully human, but that he is also fully God and he can be depended upon. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you that you sent your son into the world, that he was fully God and yet you allowed him 
to lay down the privilege and the majesty of heaven and to enter this world as a human. Father, I thank you that you have allowed him to experience the things with us in this world, in our brokenness. But I thank you, Lord, that you have raised your son to your right hand, to the place where he belongs. Father, I just pray that you would help us to have a right vision of Jesus. Would you help us to be people who don't just look at Jesus as a role model, but that we would be people who worship Jesus as Lord. For we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.